Hi, I'm Brad, and welcome to Coop Dreams. We've grown a lot since we introduced our first four hens to the rec center, and we're growing some more. We're breeding our cows and our goats, so we should have a calf, maybe, and we should have some kids, maybe. In addition, we've gone back to school with a Brinzy Earth Day hatch along to teach kids the miracle of hatching chickens. Also here at the farm, we've hatched our own guinea eggs and our own turkey eggs and added some cool new breeds from the hatchery. We've continued to try our hand at organic gardening and added two raised beds this year. We're also gonna focus on just a couple of beehives. In addition, we've added some rescue rabbits to the Coop Dreams farm and later on this year, we'll be doing our 17th Coops for Troops presentation for a worthy military family. So keep joining us, laughing and learning, right here on Coop Dreams. Weston had come and gone and hopefully was successful with at least getting Elsa pregnant. Anna, having just recently given birth, was more of a long shot and we were quite happy having magical Matilda. Now it was the goat's turn. With the four does coming into heat, our goat coach Erica brought us a buck named Force to breed with them and he wasted no time in getting started with fulfilling his duties. Evangeline was in heat and he took to her immediately. Force probably broke the speed record previously held by Flurry, the buck from two years ago that brought us Dwight, Kevin, Jim, Jan, and of course, little Pammy. On the other hand, the first buck Erica brought four years ago, Fire, tended to run and hide initially. But he eventually warmed up to the girls and sired Josie, Doc, and Crazy Morgan. Dee Dee was not new to this and had all the signs of being in heat, but then she'd back away. Pammy and Jan were rookies, wanted nothing to do with this, and pretty much steered clear of Force. Force seemed most interested in Evangeline, but she was not staying, and he would then naturally turn his attention elsewhere. After watching and being entertained by the goat's behavior for a while, it was time to let Erica take Evangeline to Twin Willows Farm to start training her for showing in competitions. All right, so what's the plan on Evangeline? How do we do this? However you want to do it. Hearts. However you want to do it. I'm not going to say goodbye until she's at the truck because that's <laughs> that's too long. It's only for a while. You're done. Save it for the other girls. <laughs> we can try. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, hey, that's okay. Get used to it. It's okay. It's alright. Does she have any memory, do you think? I think you kind of haven't had her on a lead at all in five years. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Wait till you get forced back. <laughs> well, he's always I mean I think I had her on a lead to get her up on the stanchion, but it didn't hi. take. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Hey. It's okay. Yeah, we'll have to get her walk in and. Because she'll need that for the Go show, right? Dee Dee. Oh, yeah. She'll need so, a lot of. So, how much time will it take for you to retrain her? It but she's a smart girl. My only concern is that she's a lot older now and she's probably set in her ways so it might take quite a while to get her trained hi sweetie oh sorry but she's she's standing here i'm just trying to look you have a you have a collar on see that see it's okay you want to try to walk a little try to walk oh see now don't get too excited don't get too excited. She's pretty. Oh, yeah, you want to go for a walk? <clears throat> it's 
so far? I think you got her force. It's okay. You remember this? You remember? Oh goodness. Morgan, you are huge. He is so massive. Yeah, you wanna say bye bye mama? She'll be back. She'll be back. No force. There we go. Oh, I bet I'm gonna follow my dad. We'll miss her the most. They've been buddies for so long. They'll, they'll adjust, and like I said, she'll remember when she comes back. Especially, you know, you're not changing anything in the process. Mm -hmm. She's doing good. There was none of the normal crying from the other goats, as force obviously had their undivided attention. So when she comes back, she's going to be still in milk. Okay, I can keep her in milk, yeah. I'll keep her in milk. And she'll be trained. And she'll walk on a lead. I'll let dad put you in there. I have to lift her or will she? She might, I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. And she won't try to jump she'll in the front seat, there. will she? Be good, all right? We'll see you soon. If she cries on the way home, don't tell me. She won't cry. When we got her into she Erica's cried. truck, Evangeline right, didn't seem to mind at all. That helped a lot to think that she was familiar with Erica Alrighty. and would be comfortable in her old stomping grounds. She'll be good. I'll take good care of her. I know you will. I know yeah. you will. I, you're more, probably more worried about force here than I am there. I mean, she's now she's going to have access to uh, a smarter goat coach. She's trying to get in the front seat. Is she? Yeah. That's okay. She's in the front seat. That's okay. okay. I'll get her back. <laughs> That's okay. She kind of hadn't had many rolls around here. Yeah. A big day today. We have got a uh, coop to assemble from Roost and Root, roostandroot.com. Um, very excited about this. It's similar to the walk-in coop that we got seven years ago. And that has been an absolute brilliant pickup for us. We've got 24 chickens that stay in that. And we've got some chickens coming this spring. We've got our Earth Day hatch along, so we need space for more chickens. Chicken math. So we've got another walk-in from Roost and Root. And we are excited to assemble it today and take you through those steps. So decided to put it here for a couple reasons. One, it, it should be assembled on a flat surface and it's, it's such a large coop that it's going to be difficult to move once we get it down. Um, so this is a, a flat surface. We've got this building right next to it that's going to block the wind. The wind typically comes in that direction. So that's going to shield them from the wind during the, the cold temperatures. It's out of range of a couple of the trees that I think will fall. So it'll be protected from that. Um, and then I think it's going to get pretty good sunlight as the sun comes up and over in this direction. So we think this is the best spot. We're gonna put some pavers around it, make it predator proof. Uh, we get a full day of assembly, so we are ready to go. So if you like puzzles, this is awesome. It comes with really thorough instructions. Every part is labeled, and then I'm starting to sort it by the letters. There's a letter and a number on each piece to allow for easy assembly. So everything is in here as we sort it, then we're gonna take it out piece by piece and assemble it out in the chicken yard. Very thankful to the people at Roost and Root for making it so simple uh, because building is not my specialty, but they make it easy. So what's cool is we assembled one of these seven years ago, the walk-in that we have originally. So there's a little bit of a base understanding to all these pieces, how it goes together and what it's supposed to look like. Um, but in the seven years, I've see, as I've been unpacking it, I've seen a lot of changes. So, you know, one of the things that they're really good about is inviting customer feedback and making adjustments to it. So you can see adjustments uh, in the door. You can see adjustments in the storm panels. And right now, early on, I've seen adjustments in the nesting boxes. So pretty excited to see how it looks differently than the one that they had seven years ago. 
So in the instructions, they say two people, 12 hours. The last time, the first time that we did this, it took less than that. My friend Davey, who has been a part of Coop Dreams since day one, actually came up with the name Coop Dreams. So Rockstar here. She was actually the one. She and I put the first walk in together. So we are back to see if we can beat our record because I know that we did it in less than 12 hours, but I have no idea what this is going to take because there are a few changes to it. But uh, we've got the most experience. Do you have pred a prediction? For us, um, I'm going to say six hours. I'm going to be bold, say six hours. I'm going to say seven and a half. We don't have that much film, so. Okay, that is the steak that will go in the ground. All right, what can I do to help you? Actually? You could hold this and then uh, watch your back because Mr. Turkey Turkey here is pretty violent. And then screw that in there. Let me just double check. Double check twice, cut once. That's the rule of these kinds of things. I gotta make the six and a half hours. We're already ahead because we're the, done. the last time we did this, it was we'd never done it. we didn't have a picture in our head of what it was going to look like and so it was tough to imagine the heck no mm -hmm. okay can we can you take those out yeah so <laughs> i just finished saying we're ahead all right we're a little behind this will be our first and only mistake Right. Not that I doubt you, I'm just going to look at this. Okay, you go ahead and look. I'll go, I'll attach it then. What do you I, think? I think we just do it and don't worry about that. Oh boy. Did you carry it over there with you? No. What color is it? It's just a little silver piece. It came out when it was drilled over here. Is it black? Right there too. There it is, yes. Davy. Yep. Nice. Okay. Okay. Done. There we go. Come on. I'm lay some eggs. Guineas were not happy about that. It worked well. Thanks for the rescue. <sighs> A good catch. We're almost done with the first page. I think. By the way. We're just chugging right along. You check that flushness. That is perfect. Oh, that is wor the world's best flushing. <laughs>
Gotta admit the pre-drilled holes, pretty cool. Did we, did we not do the flashing tack? Huh? Son of a... Mm -hmm. Do, we, do you know where the flashing yeah. tack is? I knew I shouldn't have been the instruction reader. Part of the reason for getting another large coop is to make room for what's coming. For one, Mr. Turkey Turkey has really been working hard to win over Mrs. Turkey Turkey, who has started laying eggs on a regular basis. Having lost most of our turkey flock to raccoons, we collected a few of her eggs to set and rebuild the turkey flock with some homegrown royal palms. We also have eight mail order eggs from Hoover's Hatchery, and there are always a few chicks to adopt following our Brinzy Earth Day hatch along with a local kindergarten class. And of course, a visit to the farm store in early spring usually includes a few chicks coming home. This time, it was three very cute buff Orpingtons. So clearly, this kind of chicken math was going to require more coop space. We took a break from coop building to get the Brinzy Maxi 24 incubator put together and to set the eight mail order eggs from Hoover's Hatchery. They were marked as three Starlight Green Eggers, three Americanas, and two English Orpingtons. One cool feature about this Maxi 24 incubator is the ability to change the egg holders for different size eggs of different bird species with the removable quadrants provided. The one with smaller holes are for chicken eggs, and the quadrants with the bigger holes are for the three bigger turkey eggs we collected. We also used the quadrants to separate the chicken egg types. The starlight green eggers went in first, then the three Americanas, followed by the two English Orpingtons. We really like collecting different egg colors and wanted to get some greenish blue colored ones in our mix again. The setup of the incubator is pretty easy, and it walks you through things step by step with the push buttons. Temperature is set to 37 and a half degrees Celsius, which is 99 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. For setting days until hatch, we entered the 21 days for chickens and would manage the turkeys at that point because they require 28 days. We always take advantage of the automatic setting for turning the eggs with a 45 minute interval so we don't have to do it manually. The computerized device also lets you set a temperature alarm range to alert you if the temperature gets too high or falls too low. After getting the settings right, water is added to the reservoir as maintaining a constant humidity inside the incubator is critically important. It's supposed to be around 60% for the first 18 days and 65 to 70% for the last three days, which is the hatching period. Thankfully, the unit maintains the humidity automatically. The refillable water reservoir is on the outside of the incubator, which feeds the middle water chamber, so the incubator lid does not need to be open. And that's so important, because every time you open it, heat and humidity escape, and that could be detrimental to the developing chicks. There's a protective guard that goes over the inside water chamber to prevent the chicks from getting in it and drowning. It is important to keep water in the reservoir during the entire incubation period. Once the water is in and the clear plastic lid is put into place, we'll wait three weeks for the pipping and hatching to start. We've timed this set of chicken eggs to hatch right around Earth Day, April 22nd. Chicken math is in high gear once again. Next week on Coop Dreams. watch episodes on the go, be sure to download the Coop Dreams app. And for even more fun, like Coop Dreams on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and visit our website at www.coopdreams.tv. Okay. Okay. My britches. Yeah, gotta have your britches up. 
Oh, uh oh, my mic. Brad hurt himself. A, B, C, D, E. Brad. Yes, you baby. You the alphabet. Starts with A. B. C. D. E. F. G. H. That took a hesitation on that one, you weren't sure.